thinking about rolling with six goons and all that shit. That's how I be telling people, you failed before you even think you won with me. Mm. Because you thinking you walking up with six dudes is going to do something to me. When I see you walking up with six dudes, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> It's Damien Jr. Just, gong Marley off in this bitch. Now he just bogle. Yeah. You're going to bogle your ass. You're going to bogle your ass because I ain't with it. I ain't with all that six dudes walking up trying to have a conversation with me about nothing. Right. Niggas be having big, black, ugly niggas. I'll be like, they really think, no, that's for niggas that's pussy. They see motherfuckers walking up and they be like, and let them walk up. Like, oh, I peep motherfuckers, <laughs> but nigga, I peep you. I'm letting you know. I'm going to look right at you. What's up? You good? Before you get up on me, are you good? Let me know now before you even walk in this square because we're not doing that. That's why I be laughing at rappers. Rappers, I don't care about you. I'm going to tell you, try me. I want I want the rappers to try me. I mm-hmm. do. I ain't going to lie. I want y'all to try me. Try me, your, your shooter, the, the, the tough nigga in your squad that just came home. Mm-hmm. Tell them try me. I want to embarrass somebody. And that's why I started bullying Troy Ave. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do? Are you going to say nothing? Or are you going to tell yourself? Oh, no, like, def- gonna- I'm definitely going to tell. But see, the, see the difference is, see, I'm not a, I'm not a, a street person. I don't believe in the street rules. I'm, right. not, I'm not that type of person anymore. And, um, and what's, what was your key word? You just say you're not that type of person anymore. Correct. And with the street thing, here, here go the thing about the streets. Where everybody need to understand. The streets is a myth. It's not real. It's, it's not in real life. There's no reason for Troy Ab not to tell on this nigga. There's no reason for Troy Ab. No, 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 no. There's no reason for him not to tell on this nigga. There's not. There's no. There, no. Hell no. Nah. There's no reason. It's this simple. It's that simple. There's no reason. He has to tell what happened. What you doing with this gun? I didn't bring this gun. I was fighting this nigga. He had the goddamn gun. I, he killed my man. I was fighting him. He was about to kill me. You got the wrong person. I got the hammer from him. Now, if y'all want to call this telling, I need to be, if you if, if I can be compensated for, tell, for saying this shit, because I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to say it anyway. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to say it anyway. He said that's telling. Y'all can eat. You know what y'all can eat. And that's what Troy believed. Troy. Type of videos and receipts to back up everything that I'm saying. Let me, let me just talk to y'all for a second, right? Let me just educate the people for those of y'all that kind of are oblivious to what this internet is all about, right? Let me explain to y'all one thing real quick, right? This thing that we call internet is a virtual reality space where if you are a content creator or YouTube person, a person, YouTube personality, one thing about YouTube personalities, we can be whatever we want to be. Somebody say, man, what you mean by that? When I say that you could be whatever you want to be as a YouTube content creator, I could come on here and pretend to be the biggest, toughest gangster, pimp, thug, in the world, I could come on here and say I shot 10 people, I did this to that person, I sold hell of drugs, I could come on here and lie, 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 if I am an internet person, because what I've learned throughout the years with the internet, as far as a per- person, uh, internet personality, most people are characters, you know, we hear it now all the time, with Charles, well, I'm a character, I'm a character, 99% of your content creators, YouTube, internet niggas are characters for the most part. These motherfuckers come on here and act like they're something that they're not. Long story short, they act like they're something that they are not. Now, an internet nigga could play a street nigga, but a street nigga cannot play an internet nigga. Let me explain what I mean by that. Somebody say, what does that mean, man? Again, I, as an internet, quote unquote, internet nigga, come on here and be all I can be, and I can tell y'all I'm a motherfucking astronaut, and I did this, that, and the third, and if you what, if you guys really don't know me personally, I can lie to y'all and persuade y'all to, to convince y'all, yeah, nigga, I've been to the moon, nigga, three, four times. Fuck is you talking about, nigga? Huh? But a street nigga can't play 
an internet nigga. Basically, you can't bring street rules to the internet. That's what I'm basically trying to explain to y'all in a nutshell. You cannot bring street rules and street politics to the internet and think it's going to go in the same philosophy as uh, y'all so-called street rules. I was talking to, I shout out to, uh, I had Swave on my show the other day, Swave Sever, and he came on my show and he was like, yo, the, some of the biggest trolls are street niggas. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, some of the biggest shows on the internet are street niggas. Like, where they do that at as- Street as niggas that get acclimated to the internet now. Wow. Wow. Yo, you know some of the biggest shows on the internet are street niggas, bro? Wow. So, <laughs> like, it blows my mind, bro. It blows mine, too. But wow. you know what it is? It's a fun thing. It's a fun thing to niggas. Wow. Get on there and talk shit with niggas. Niggas, this shit is kind of fun and ignorant. Oh, shit. Wow. Street niggas in real life, they troll in real life. They fuck with people. They do this and the third. They antagonize people. They bully people. Trolls, you know, are some of the sh biggest street niggas are trolls. I said, well, if they think that they could go on the internet, create a YouTube channel, and talk about their real life and keep it real and do this, that, and the third and bring it online, guess what? Somebody will be watching you. The feds do be on this motherfucker. They will be watching your monkey ass and document all your so-called street tough guy things that you did back in the day. And some of these niggas are so stupid that they don't really understand how to subliminally tell their story without indicting or telling the other people. So that sometimes they be on here dry snitching like a motherfucker, building cases and cases and cases. So as a street nigga come on here and tell y'all how many drugs he sold and how many bodies he dropped and this, that, and the third, if the statue of limitations ain't up, you building a case against your monkey ass. You don't realize it, nigga. As opposed to me, a so-called internet nigga, I could come on here and say this, that, and the third. If the feds are watching me, when they do their due diligence and they do their research and to find out if I really did this, that, and the third, they're going to say, oh, nah, this nigga ain't, this nigga just all here capping. This capping ass nigga, fuck out of here, nigga. We don't believe you. You need more people, nigga. Hey, 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 so again, an uh, internet nigga could play whatever character that he wants to play, but a street nigga, you come on here, you keep it too real, nigga, you're getting yourself an indictment. You're getting yourself locked up. So I say that to say this. We're talking about the Troy Ave versus Tax Tone case that's going on right now, right? And the shit is right now is a clusterfuck, right? And I put a poll in the live chat, ladies and gentlemen. I put a poll in the live chat and I asked y'all, is Troy Ave, ooh, I asked if Troy, is Troy Ave a snitch? 47% of y'all said yes, and 53% of y'all said no, okay? So if I look in the live chat, and I'm looking in the chat, there's 17 people who voted. There's 17 people in the chat. Sounds like everybody, for the most part, voted for uh, it. And most people, for the most part, as of now, says that um, Troy Ave is not a snitch, right? And I want to say from me as being, you know, somebody who doesn't follow street politics because the biggest the biggest misconception of being black in america is they always want to put all black people in one pot one bucket if you're black you're supposed to be this uh stereotype of don't report things if something happened in the neighborhood if you see a friend get shot Turn a blind eye and don't say nothing, this, that, and the third, and community this. And if you're black, if you talk to the police, you are a rat. This is sometimes some people's philosophy. You never really hear any other community or race being ridiculed, being threatened, being disrespected, being clowned for talking to the police. I have never seen in any Asian community that the Asian people are getting at each other because the other Asian person business got robbed and they went and spoke to, spoke to the police about something that they had no a part of. It's a shame that we have this brainwashed society and culture that we live in as black people, that we are supposed to be the most beaten, battered people in the world. And we're supposed to shut the fuck up if somebody violates us, our friends, our family, and our property, right? It's a fucked up world we live in. I, I don't get it. The scale was way off. Any other community you could think of, go inside of one of these suburban areas and talk about some, oh, this guy over here that owns this $2 million mansion, I can't believe he called the police because some motherfuckers ran inside of his house and 
violated him and his family and did this, they're not going to be called rats. Only when you have this color skin, when you have this melanin in your skin, they put us in a box that if you talk to the police, if you take the stand, you are a rat. All right? You are a rat. I don't subscribe to that shit at all whatsoever. So as I've been sitting back and I've been rolling through these YouTube streets, I've been looking around and I've been watching, I've been wondering like, hmm, I wonder what people, especially the content creators, feel about this. And as I look around, it's actually 50-50, just like how the poll in the live chat is around 50-50. I hear some content creators who says, yo, Troy App is not a snitch. Then I hear others saying, oh, yeah, he's a snitch because this down the third. And here we go. All right, let me get my glasses right, motherfuckers. Yeah, dumbass niggas. This is a disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act, 1976, motherfucker. Yeah, bastards. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism on y'all dumbass niggas, comments on y'all dumbass niggas, news reporting, teaching, Scholarship and research on y'all dumbass niggas. This is a disclaimer. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute, motherfucker, that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips. The balance in favor of fair use. You dumbass, selfish ass bastards. This video was made for entertainment purposes and is trans transformative in nature. <laughs> and I'm drunk, cap. but read the hey, fucking disclaimer. Whatever hey, I say. Take his key. Hey, where can you at, man? Read the disclaimer, nigga. We take it. Right? And this is a self defense situation. There's no reason for Troy Ab not to tell on this nigga. There's no reason for Troy Ab. No, 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 no. There's no reason for him not to tell on this nigga. There's not. There's no. There, no. Hell no. Nah. There's no reason. It's this simple. It's that simple. There's no reason. He has to tell what happened. What you doing with this gun? I didn't bring this gun. I was fighting this nigga. He had the goddamn gun. I, he killed my man. I was fighting him. He's about to kill me. You got the wrong person. I got the hammer from him. Now, if y'all want to call this telling, I need to be. If you, if, if I can be compensated for tell, for saying this shit, because I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm gonna say it anyway. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna say it anyway. He said that's telling. Y'all can eat. You know what y'all can eat. And that's what Troy believed. Troy. To be honest with you, I can understand why some people would say that he is a snitch because of the persona that he gave people online for years on, on, on his music. His music is straight street music. He'll tell you like, nigga, I fuck with the hoes and the gangsters. Huh? I fuck with the hoes and the gangsters. He'll tell you in his music, it will brainwash you, the frequency of the music, you're vibing to the music and you're dancing and it feel good, but he's telling you in his music and some people who are naive will sit back and listen to his music and believe what he's saying in his music. It's music. But as a wise, grown, mature adult that I think that I am, I say, hell no. <laughs> I put myself in a situation like, for example, my guy Willie B in the live chat, Andre Obama in the live chat, Fresh Breezy in the live chat, right? These my guys, right? These my guys in real life. Me and them out there, we having a good time and shit like that. And, you know, we mind our business and some motherfucker come up to us and, you know, shit kind of get kind of shaky or whatever. We mind our business. We having a good time and shit like that. And we're not on no type of gangster type type of time. We all work in family men, right? If one of my men's get popped, right? I'm going to try my best in that situation. First and foremost, try my best in that situation to, 
try to protect my mans at all times. We're going to try to our best to try to either de-escalate the situation or if shit get left, if one of my mans get popped and I have control of the situation where I got the gun and I was able to get the gun from the nigga that popped my man and I'm popping back, I will probably do the same exact thing Troy Ave did. We over there tussling for the gun because he shot my man. Just to see this nigga blow my nigga brains out just now. So now, like, all right, cool. First thing I'm going to try to do in the situation is, I, uh, at least I will hope, is to try to make sure nobody else gets hurt because I just see my man get his brains blown out just now in front of everybody. <laughs> nigga shot a nigga in the, in the club, nigga, backstage, mad niggas in the goddamn room. So I, now I know this nigga is right here ain't playing no games. So what Troy Ave did, in a sense, was kind of gangster. Yeah, it was gangster. When I first seen it, I said, oh, shit. That's what's up. I ain't seen no shit. Like, we ain't, we ain't hear no nigga getting shot in the club since goddamn Remy Ma and motherfucking Shine back in the day. He brought it back. I said, yo, that is gangsta. Unfortunately, his man got killed. But for him to try to, you know, in a sense, avenge his man's death and bust back at the nigga and, and this, that, and the third, according to what the story that we're hearing, is commendable in my personal opinion. In my personal opinion. Now, I say that to say this. When shit going on and now my man's is dead, God forbid, but my man's is gone now. He got a wife, he got a mom, he got a family, he got kids and shit like that. Why would I have loyalty to the nigga that tried to take me the fuck up out of here? Some nigga that been antagonizing me all this time on the internet for years. Nigga went on a campaign on this show and that podcast and this radio station and ta bragging about he bullied me, the nigga disrespecting me and how much my music is trashed and this, this nigga keep fucking with me. And now I'm at my place of business. Troy, I have what I understand was booked at Irvin Plaza to perform with T.I. on stage. Like, you know, whether he was opening for T.I. or whatever. You come to my place of business, allegedly from what we're hearing now, because the fingerprints of the uh, his fingerprints was in the, on on the magazine, and the forensic says that the gun belonged to Tag Stone. The gun belonged to Tag Stone, according to the paperwork. So if the gun belonged to Tag Stone, tells me this nigga went to a place where he know. His so-called person that he been fucking with for years is in that same facility and you came there with a gun illegally, which tells me that in your mind, you already knew that this shit was going to pop off. And what you did, well, what you allegedly did was premeditated, premeditated, ladies and gentlemen, for those that don't know what premeditated means, it means he was home and before he left the house. As he put on his socks and his drawers and his belt and his pants and his hoodie and whatever the hell he had on, another equipment that he had to take with him inside of that place was a motherfucking pistol. A motherfucking pistol, ladies and gentlemen. So I asked the question, my nigga, is Troy Ave really snitching or no? I'm asking y'all, man, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out, man, because I get ridiculed for saying, yeah, 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 he's supposed to do that. He's supposed to do that. So for those of that don't know, uh, Troy Ave went and he testified uh, and he took the stand and this is how he described what happened in Irvin Plaza. Was shot and wounded. Troy Ave told the jury, quote, if it's fight or flight, I'm always going to fight because at that point, video. you can die. Then he goes on to describe the tussle, saying, quote, when the shot goes off, I see the light from the spark and I hear the <laughs> shot. This is all happening fast. I get up and start fighting Tag Stone, trying to take him, grab the gun, and another shot goes off. I put my leg up, kind of blocked the shot from hitting me in the face or chest. Then Troy Ave said it was that time Tag Stone shot him in both of his legs. Sheesh. Now he then went on to say, quote, I got up, I'd rather die fighting. People die from leg shots, I'd rather die fighting. Mm, okay, okay, well, he was basically telling his story. Hold on, hold on. 
peace. Now he then went on to say, quote, I got up, I'd rather die fighting. People die from leg shots, I'd rather die fighting than lay on the ground. I got up immediately. Now he also testified that he finally got his hands on the gun and got his fleeing rival in sight, only to have the weapon misfire, he testified. Now, if y'all are a little confused at what he mean when he say misfire, I'm not gonna lie, Tax Stone definitely must have an angel or something God in his life. Because if you ever see the surveillance camera, and we're going to put it on our um, channel so y'all can check it out. But if y'all ever see the surveillance footage with everything going down, when Tax ran out of that room, you could clearly see that he was in the sight of um, Troy Ave. Troy Ave had him. He was right there. He put the weapon up to kind of like shoot, you could tell, but it didn't go off. Then he kind of had to like fix it. And then that's when the shot went off. However, I always felt that if that first shot went off, it wouldn't be no tax at all because he was right there in his sight. So he definitely had a guardian angel on him, but you know, that's nonetheless. Now, um, Troy Ash says that's only when he noticed that his. All right, shout out to Anger Management TV. He says, nah, homie. Oh, he said, nah, my guy. The big ape invited him, Cass. The big ape, Cass, no, invited him. That's why he went, but he learned he was going to be there, champ. If you ask me, Cas, if you said Casanova invited Taxstone there, so my question to you is, why would Taxstone bring a gun if he didn't know that Troy Ave was going to be in the building? You see how that works? And I will also ask you, Anger Management TV, nice to see you too. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, speaking of Casanova, Casan, this case, if you ask me, right, according to the evidence that I've seen, if I was one of the people on the jury according to the evidence that I've been seeing because there's actually a wiretap ladies and gentlemen so at the time of this happened at Urban Plaza Casanova was being investigated by the federal government yes Casanova two times Mr. Big Ape was being investigated which means his phones were being tapped so coincidentally, at the time of the shooting, guess what Casanova says on wiretap, ladies and gentlemen? Casanova was talking to another person and was like, yo, this nigga Tax Stone shot the club up, man. Tax Stone shot the club up, man. He had they got video foot uh, audio of this guy, Casanova, in a sense, admitting who was the person behind the trigger. Mm. See how that works? Shit crazy. Shout out to everybody in the chat. JJ, he says, I take Troy to battle with me any day. He ain't fold and bust back. See? Okay, now I see people all out here, man. How you doing, Pink Sugar? Nice to see you. Um, Yeah. Like, that's just my opinion. It's crazy. So, um, like, let's talk about, I'm glad you brought him up. Um, I'm glad you brought him up, Anger Management TV. Let's talk about Casanova for a second, right? Casanova is, you know, him and uh, him and Taxstone were real life friends, right? Or are real life friends, I should say, right? And I believe, you know, Taxstone has something to do with the career of Casanova as far as Taxstone's connections with this person and that person. They was real life friends, and Casanova even made a song about, you know, Taxstone. It's a nice ass song too, as a matter of fact. You know what I mean? But in the song, he's making it seem like this guy, Tax Stone, wasn't the person that pulled the trigger. Pay attention. So